Rolling. Slate. One of my long-term goals is to make a feature length film, but I mostly shoot product videos and corporate style videos. So instead of investing into more gear, I invested money into making a short film where I would be the director and the writer and the cinematographer and anything else that I couldn't find help to do. I've always wanted to make a short film with real actors speaking real lines on camera at multiple different locations, but honestly, my excuses and insecurities over the years kept those productions from happening. Realizing this, I asked a handful of friends if they'd be available in three weeks. They all responded yes, and without finalizing the script or having any actors yet, I booked the first Airbnb that allowed us to film and I just locked in the date. Now I had to get to work. I saved up $1,500, I asked a lot of favors and full sent the entire budget on locations, actors, crew, and food. The budget was very small and it went fast. It felt like I was jumping out of a plane without a parachute. I loved it. I felt alive. <laughs> right by the stop sign, we'll do here in the passenger seat getting out. Eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. There were many mild panic attacks between the larger ones mainly when it came to writing the script, making the storyboards, finding actors, people bailing out, new ones coming on, gathering gear, feeding people, and just so many other things. Each of those deserves its own video, but I'm fresh off of directing my first self-funded narrative short. So I wanted to go over some things that um, I experienced and I learned, and at the end, what I could do better. So is this about where I wanna open the door so you can that, see that over is my the, shoulder? That is the angle right there. I like every part of filmmaking from operating the camera to sound to lighting. If I'm messing around with sound, but I need to input something about the camera or an actor has a question, I'm not there for them. The benefit of having a team is everyone doing their jobs, coming together to one, minimize time between shots, but also make all of this work. This shot helps illustrate what I mean. After a good take of the father delivering his lines, we are now setting up for the grandfather character's lines. Yeah, that was great. Um, oh, yeah, there we go. Let's do, let's do that one more time. Flip the mic to dad. We're not going <coughs> to the drinking scene. Because yeah, we got that on you already. We're not, flip we're going to, we're going to take it up to, to the very end. Don't drink. Okay. Just for the father. Um, right, 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 right. Yeah. Just take one minute of that. After we wrapped and I watched that BTS clip, I realized how efficient a set could be if you just step back and let it be productive. After we cut, my wife checked the script and got the slate ready for the next shot. John is getting sound ready for the next scene. Ryan, my first AC, is refilling the actor's glass that he just drank from so we can run the scene again. And then he picks up his follow focus to refocus when the actor sits down. Chinner, the guy filming this BTS clip, was on the B cam, and after this clip, he got ready for the next shot. I could technically do all those things myself, and my inner filmmaking nerd wants me to do those things, but when you have a team, the power of delegating all those things and everyone coming together to collaborate on a shot really keeps the day moving forward and it just keeps the quality of everything very high. If I was doing all those things, I would probably make a mistake at one point. I want to do everything, but I have to take a step back and let everyone do their jobs. The next thing I learned was on the day of, the script and storyboard are incredibly important. Also, not everyone knows the script as well as you do, so if someone has a question and they come up to you about scene six, shot four, you can show them, this is what I was thinking and here are the lines. Here's the shot before it, here's the shot after it. What do you think about that? Being able to answer people's questions quickly when you're shooting multiple pages a day is a really fantastic skill. Again, I pulled this one from commercial world, but it is exponentially more important when you're moving locations and you have multiple different shoots and people need to deliver lines in a certain way on camera. Uh, I can't stress enough how different that is from just filming a regular interview. However, you have to be willing to just throw all of this away. The next thing I learned is that you have to know when to make adjustments. Things change on set and sometimes things just won't work given uh, time restrictions or maybe a shot just is impossible. And it's important to be willing to change things on the fly to keep the day moving and the schedule where it should be. 
Knowing each shot allows you to combine two shots that maybe would have taken 30 minutes into one shot that takes 15 minutes, and you can stay on schedule while still conveying the same message. Knowing the script and being able to reference the storyboards to confidently make those adjustments really helped here. I think if I didn't have the storyboard sketched out, even in my like very rough sketches, I wouldn't be as confident as combining multiple scenes or expanding other ones. Having that blocked out was a great resource. When it comes to making a short film or any video, audio is 50% of the experience, and that's where today's sponsor comes in, Artlist. Artlist makes it easy to find music and sound effects that helps your viewer experience your work. Their tools make it easy to find the exact song to fit the tone you're trying to convey, and they have thousands of assets to choose from. They have playlists of songs to give you inspiration, or my favorite way to find music is to pick a genre and refine it with mood keywords. You can even get as granular as selecting what kind of instrument you want in the song, choosing if you want vocals or not, or adjusting the BPM. Another great feature is the Similar Songs button. This will help you bring up a whole list of similar songs to help you refine your results even further. Discovering the perfect sound effects is another reason why I love Artlist. They have a huge collection of high quality sound effects that help tell the story. Sound effects help immerse your viewers in the scene, from slow footsteps to create suspense, to running to help convey the action. Artlist has an extensive catalog of sound effects to help take your videos to the next level. Artlist has over 400,000 assets available, and more are being added constantly, so you'll be sure to find what you're looking for. Artlist has multiple plans from music and sound effects packages to the Max Pro plan, which allows you to also download footage, templates, plugins, and even editing software. You can link your social channels to your Artlist account for automatic copyright clearing of the royalty-free music and remove the headache of copyright claims. Artlist is offering two free months if you follow the link in my description. Thank you, Artlist, for sponsoring this video. This next one is really aimed at first-time directors, but one insecurity I had was taking the leap to make the short film in the first place. Um, I heard a lot of people say that your first film is going to suck, and honestly, that held me back for a long time. I wanted to challenge that and make something that didn't suck. If I'm putting all this time and effort and money into doing something, I wanna make it as good as I can possibly make it. I wanna make the perfect three act structure with an unexpected plot twist with beautiful cinematography and talented actors and great sound design. I let that idea of making something perfect keep me from making anything at all. But when I shifted my focus to just making a short film with my friends and just learning things along the way, all that pressure just went away and it was actually fun to make. I take it that didn't go well. No, it didn't. I take it that went like shit. Yeah, it went like shit. <laughs> 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 After each project at work, we do a retrospective, taking a look at what worked and what didn't. This has really helped me improve my work over time, and even though this project isn't edited and done yet, I still want to take a look at my goals and see how I achieved them and score myself at how well I actually did. My first goal was to write a script that focused on two people talking. No guns, no extravagant props, no voiceovers, multiple locations. I wrote the script so two people were talking when they were sitting down, and it was just going to be overs, singles, and then close-ups when needed. Uh, while Aaron Sorkin would probably scoff at my writing, um, I did write a script of two people talking with no guns or costumes, just two dudes having a conversation. So in that regard, I'm gonna give myself a high score here. Notice my goal wasn't to make a masterpiece, just to make it. Next time, I'll focus more time on the script, but for this one, I'm going to give myself seven out of 10 prop guns here. My next goal was to storyboard every shot in every scene, and I did pull this one off, and this one was very important, so I knew what lines were going to be delivered, what would be on screen, and this was also important to have the scene and shot numbers for reference on the slate, and to mark which takes I wanted um, after we were done filming them. I did this old school and I didn't play back a single clip all day. I was just watching my camera monitor and I could just feel if a shot was good or not when I was looking through that monitor. So again, that helped us save some time, but also 
when I was making those notes, I knew exactly which takes I wanted. Um, we did do safety takes if I thought one was good, um, but maybe I was like, this is 95% good. Uh, I was 5% a little hesitant about it. Uh, we just ran it again. The storyboards were time consuming, but I could not have done it without it. I will give myself seven out of 10 binders for this one. Uh, my drawings look like a child made them, so there's some room for improvement in the future there. My next goal was to cast and learn how to work with actors in a narrative environment. This one was surprisingly different from commercial work. Conveying emotion through dialogue and blocking on screen is incredibly tough, especially when you're casting a grandfather, a father, and a son character. I had no idea when it came to casting actors what that actually looked like. I leaned on my network of referrals pretty hard here, and in the end, I got a lot of great recommendations, but I ended up going with two, uh, a grandfather and a father character, shout out to Sean Manos in Atlanta, and another one uh, was the son recommendation from my friend Tyler in Ohio. Working with actors in set is a whole different ballgame though. The actors are the ones that's bringing all of this stuff to life so you have to let them be creative and get into their characters roles this is something that i need to work on and honestly i need to read a book or take a course on this one if you have any recommendations please let me know in the comments down below i'm going to give myself uh seven out of ten clipboards on this one i learned a ton but i still have a lot to learn my next goal was to deliver the project on time and on budget. Uh, this is a goal for every project, but this one was particularly ambitious because I had no idea what I was doing. For this project, the deadline uh, in pre-production was about three weeks. So I gave myself four days to write my first screenplay. And when I started all this, I didn't know what real screenplay formatting was. So one of those four days was spent learning screenplay formatting. Uh, this deadline helped me learn and keep my ego in check. I knew this wasn't going to be the greatest screenplay ever. I just wanted to pull it off and learn something along the way. I then took the screenplay and turned it into storyboards, just scribbling down stick figures and how I wanted each shot to look. Again, not winning any awards here, but I got it done. I was at a bit of an advantage when it came to gear though, because I shoot corporate stuff already. I had lots of gear. It was just a matter of figuring out what gear I needed and transporting it uh, to the set. So I was very fortunate there. I had the Airbnb for three full days, but one day uh, was only available for shooting for everyone to be available. So I had one day, the Friday was the pre-light day. Saturday was the shoot day, and then Sunday I filmed little insert things, and then I tore everything down. I also stayed within my budget of $1,500 as well. I spent $600 on the Airbnb, $600 on actors and crew, and the rest went to lunch and having a fully stocked fridge and snacks. I know I was asking a lot of favors here. Everyone was working well under their day rate. So in the future, I would like to have more funding to actually pay everyone what they're worth. Um, I was funding this one myself, so I, that's all I can afford right now. But for this one, I'm gonna give myself six out of 10 Red Bulls. Uh, I stayed within the time and budget, but I was asking a ton of favors. And in the future, I wanna pay everyone what they're worth. I'm really kicking myself for not making a short film sooner. Uh, this is my first time hiring actors, delivering lines on camera, and while it took a lot of work, I had a blast and I can't wait to do it again. I learned more in three weeks than I feel like I learned all last year. I cannot wait to take everything I learned on this short and take it to the next one to make it even better. If you've been thinking about making a short film but never got around to doing it like me, I'm telling you, just go make a film with your friends and learn something. It was one of the best experiences of my life. I have a few more videos planned around this short, so stick around for more of those in the future. Uh, I know this was a long-winded video, but I'm fresh off of directing my first short film, so um, I'm really excited about it and I can't wait to work on the next one. Thank you guys for sticking around to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.